Hi, welcome. I'm Carmen, your Divine Synergist of Heart's Joy. Thank you for joining today's video. Today we're focused on having the conversation of race relations today in America and what action steps we can take to have um, a healthier future, basically. So I want to say thank you. Um, I have Tawana Hill, Damon Stafford, and Joy Hughes today, so thank you. Park, Park, yeah. Park sorry. <laughs> um, I've known this lady for so long. She just got married, so well, look, sorry about that. Yes. Thank you. Awesome. Yay. Um, yes, it's happened. I apologize. So thank you all so much for joining today. Um, thank you, Tawana, for hosting us. We are here at a beautiful Mimosa and a Masterpiece downtown Indianapolis off Mass Ave, where you can come and what, what do you say? Sip and create? Come sip and create. I love it. Yes. And I have my sip somewhere. Yes. <laughs> somewhere back there. <laughs> Come grab yourself on the mosa. So, um, I just want to start out by asking you each, it, it, it's, it's been, what, three months, something like that, um, since we had the riots here downtown, and luckily your building has been saved, right, by the riots. Um, since the George Floyd um, situation. And what is it, how do you feel now since all of that started? And where, what's shifted for you guys in your life? And I'd like to start with Tawana. Um, so, I guess I'm still at a place of uh, a little disappointment okay. because, well, Gratitude and disappointment. Okay. Gratitude that there are a lot more eyes on the issue and the problem. Um, gratitude that I think um, there seems to be a shift that has happened in the awakening of what it is like to perhaps be black and living in America. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that um, there are a lot more people in action to try to correct some of the ills of um, the experiences of black people in America. Uh, disappointed in the fact that um, a lot of us are still have to deal with mm -hmm. uh, Black Lives Matter, I mean, we still have to deal with all lives matter and blue lives matter, which was never the issue for us Correct. because we know that. Yes. <laughs> we know. <laughs> we know that all lives matter and blue lives matter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what we don't know is that black lives matter. Right. And so um, that is one. And a little disappointed that people are still looking to us to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And um, disappointed that more, um, the, the people who fought so hard mm -hmm. to put laws in place to uh, make it difficult to be black and live in America, are not as energetic around correcting mm -hmm. those laws. Making a change. Absolutely. Good point. Absolutely. Very good point. So, okay. um, that's kind of what it's kind of raised for me. I'm going to bring up some things okay. here in a minute of what you shared. So, thank you very much. Yes. All right. Well, I would echo a lot of what Tawana's sentiment is. Um, I would also add that. I like, I like the attitude of being appreciative. Mm -hmm. I am more aware of who allies are as they self-identify. I am disappointed, but not surprised that the narrative is shifting, that we are now, the Black Lives Matter slogan is being, I mean, we're, we're talking about organization versus a movement, we're talking about politics versus our lives. Mm -hmm and having to defend what BLM is, what it isn't, and why we can have discerning, we can discern between 
bad apples in law enforcement, yes. but not bad apples in BLM. Yes. There's just a lot of stuff being thrown, distractions, and what about child's lives? Yes, I know, why are you co-opting the logo and the phrase? It's just, um, it, it's something that's cyclical, it happens, it's happening again, and we, I think a lot of us started off super encouraged that, wow, like people we never thought would move to the center of an issue are crossing that center line and now truly aligning themselves with what they know to be, I'm just gonna say, the right side of history. But then here we come again with the spin doctoring, and we're in a we live in a cancel culture, meaning it's it's there's no gray, it's all this or all that. You either adopt 100 percent or it's trash. And I'm kind of I'm experiencing personal disconnection from a lot of it. I'm exhausted in explaining what it is, what it isn't. I am disinterested in educating people who can educate themselves and spend time on Facebook deciding what kind of potato they are but not do their own research about <laughs> what Black Lives Matter is and what it isn't. And so I'm kind of, you know, the people who show up for the real conversations are like-minded people and that's great. And I realized you meet people where they are and some of them you get to leave there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's where I am today. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Joy? And I want to piggyback on some of the things you were talking about, even like um, Facebook and, and having a group of friends, some who are willing to try to dive in and understand a lot, lot better, and those who are very close-minded and are unaware of what's going on because it doesn't impact them. And I think for myself, it's, it's difficult to, I, I trying to navigate through those relationships, do I maintain that relationship because they're not relating to what I'm going through and, and what's going on through society. Or do I, you know, maintain that relationship? It's just trying to get, navigate through that. And that's been probably a difficult thing. And I have actually um, gotten rid of some friends. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. We were just talking about because that. Because I just, I don't have, just like you were saying, I don't have time to educate you when you're not educating yourself mm -hmm. and you're wanting to put your head in a, a sandbox and not pay attention to what's going on is very frustrating for me yes but i have some friends who are reaching out and it's like i'm with you i hate that you that you're going through this because i've even and it's actually have taught me to be a little bit more transparent race has never been an easy subject for for anyone no matter what side of the table you're on but i'm finding myself having to create more courage mm -hmm. and being a little bit more transparent because I do care what people think of me, but I'm caring, starting to care less yeah. because I'm wanting to, um, I'm wanting to start expressing the truth mm -hmm. and you may not like my truth. And so I'm now dealing with the, you know, the, the fallout of maybe you shouldn't be part of my because there's this lack of understanding. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at as far as the, the journey of, of the people around me, my association. And also I think too, trying to even figure out, should I use Facebook as part of that conversation as well? Because I have a lot of people on social media who just wants to stay light. You know, vacations yes. and friends and babies. Babies, yes. and, I, and I'm all for that, but then where do we come together to have these conversations if not on social media? So I'm trying to figure that how much how much do I put out there? How much do I withdraw? How much do I comment on other people's comments when it's so far far away from what I believe? <laughs> how do I? I mean, I'm just yeah, and I've actually been a lot more outspoken here lately, and I'm just like, whoa, this is so not me. Yeah, but I think that that's where I need to be. This is an opportunity for us to have a voice and speak the truth of what's going on in our own black community. And there's more people more interested than ever before. So let me start talking, I guess. Very proud of you for speaking up too. Because you've even shared some things with me that, because after this happened, I had reached out to you too. And then if you don't mind sharing with everybody 
the story you had shared with me, and I was like, I can't even believe that you experienced that. You know, like it breaks my heart that you had that experience. Well, I mean, my experience is probably no different than any other black person living in this country. <laughs> um, but I'm a little bit, mine was probably a little bit different in that because of my light skin, there are people who immediately assume that I'm white and they get very comfortable expressing themselves in a way that I would not want them to express themselves. Yes. And so before, if I feel like the conversation is headed towards a direction I don't want them to head, because I'm like, oh, stop. Um, just want to let you know, I'm black. Oh, I didn't know. <laughs> so I, before we before we go there, I'm trying to like pull them back, like whatever whatever you're feeling, just keep it to yourself. Yes. You know, because I just because I don't. It, it's very hurtful yes. when you do face that whole prejudice mm -hmm. and bias, and you're looking at it right in their face. You're just like. It just hurts your heart, and I, I just didn't want to go through that. So I immediately like, whoa, time out, I'm black. And so that creates a whole different conversation, mm -hmm. but it never goes to the place where I think it was going, because I wanted to put the brakes on it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I've just had, because of my light skin, I've had people say things they would not say for someone who's brown. And it's just been, this is a very interesting, disheartening um, experiences. Mm -hmm. Even like, and one of the stories that, Car that I was telling Carmen was, Carmen and I have gone to the Covered Bridge for years. Love the Covered Bridge. I took my husband there. Um, and granted, I, I have to say that I, I feel like the discrimination and the prejudice is more out in front of us with this new with the administration that is today than it ever has been before. People are very comfortable <laughs> in their skin and in their beliefs. Um, and so when we went to the Covered Bridge Festival, it was, it felt very different than me being with Carmen. Because one, there was this thought that a mixed couple, white and black, in um, rural Indiana. So that created some looks, comments even. Um, people feeling, uh -huh, that's what I said. People feeling very comfortable, like I said. Um, Paul and I, were, we were holding hands, just walking with all these other people at the festival. And this man says, I wouldn't do that if I were you. Is he talking to us? And why wouldn't we? We're two people in love. Mm -hmm. There's no different than those people holding hands. Right. Right? But I knew exactly what he meant. Again, he's mistaking me for someone that I'm not. But what difference does it make? I wonder if I was black. Why, why are you even approaching me and saying anything at all? Mm -hmm. You don't know me. So then it's that blatant, like, Yikes, right? And so it kind of put a damper for the rest of the day, but we just kept on because I'm like, you're going to hold my hand, and the rest of these people can, I don't care. And kiss, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? But at the same time, we are out of our element. There are things go on in rural Indiana. I mean, you got police um, harassment. I did not, I wanted us to make it home safely, right? So you gotta kind of think, and the experience is completely different when you're black and you're in an all white area. Yes. Even that, right? Because you have to think about things like that. Well, we don't want to ruffle the feathers because we do want to get home safely. Mm -hmm. We don't want a police car behind us pulling us over. Because why? Because there's a black man in the car? Mm -hmm. You know, so, so it, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if we ever will go back. So here's, you know, it, there's a there's a challenge between wanting to live your life and doing things that you want to do, but wanting to do them safely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I remember when you told me that that happened, and I was like, again, my brain had a hard time equating that, you know, because that's not just a viewpoint that I have. And I was like, why? I don't. 
think that's where a lot of, I'm gonna call it, con not that you need to be converted, but I think that's where I've experienced with conversion because I've heard st just, I think I mentioned this to you before, I've had someone tell me, well, you live in Zionsville, what are you mad about? Like really, it's like, well, you're doing well, right. you're not like those black people. Right. And they get comfortable not just because right. I'm fairer skinned and I think that black people and white people will ask me, are, is your, are both your parents black? Yeah, I mean, my mom is her complexion. Like my mom got mad because she got a ticket and said white female on it. She was pissed. So, 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 but, but, yeah, it's like, but it's like white people know I'm not white, and black people want to know. Well, you're not all black, are you? Are you Puerto Rican? No. Black. So, but I've had. I think that if I go back to my point of conversion, it's like people will say, "Well, you." I've had people drop the n bomb around me. They get comfortable. What's up, my? And I'm like, wait a minute. We don't have that relationship ever. Like, no, that's not. Just because we're cool doesn't mean, well, the rap, the rap music, I'm, mm -mm, I'll meet you outside in a minute. Because yeah. We're not doing this. Like this, this. So there's a lot of nuance and there's a lot of, but I think that to your point about it doesn't entry register for you, like it's 2020, right? Yes and no. That's not, that's not very different than, you know, me being in fifth, fourth grade in the playground. And in Rockville Park, where they had the rockets, and there were black kids on one rocket and white kids on the other rocket. And I'm four years old, and I'm going to the white side. You can't come up here. Why not? You just can't come up here. Go to the black side. Wait a minute. Well, he's at least mixed. Come on up here. I mean, it's like, so it's, and that was 1974, 75. So her, her stories, I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. I would go to IU, go to Bloomington. My dad would say, make sure you have air in your tires, gas in your tank, and oil is changed. Don't stop in Martinsville. Yeah. And now Martinsville's not much different. There are some black faces there. There are some mixed babies there. But the population is still homogenous for the most part, and the attitude's the same. So The thought process. Yeah, the it's, it's, so it's there, and there are pockets. There are different, you know, I don't know. It's, it's not, I'm, I'm, it's, it's upsetting and I'm halfway shaking hearing your story because I've heard it, it's not surprising. But there, and there are people who just, it doesn't register so it can't be real. And I said when George Floyd happened, it was either you don't know anybody or love anybody of color, spend time with them. Either you are so afraid that it is true, you're in complete denial, or you co-sign and you're happy, you're fine with it. The administration we have in place right now, I get into arguments with people all the time about, well, Make America Great Again, Great Again was a true statement. It wasn't about you know, division. It wasn't about ha hatred, racism. I said, well, why doesn't he separate himself from people rebranding what MAGA is? Like, why don't you come out and just say, you know, you wouldn't rebrand, you wouldn't let somebody rebrand when this is a masterpiece for something that wasn't, right. or heart's joy. Yeah. So why don't you come down definitively and say, this is not what this is about, and make us this clear distinction. No, there are good people on both sides. You know, that's why people are involved to say, I wouldn't do that. Absolutely. Like, it's crazy. Well, and I've been doing research on another topic here recently, and what I am noticing is this three-dimensional energy reality is they want you to be divisive. They, I feel like, like politicians, Want the divisiveness. That that's just that's that's how I feel right now about everything, and that's where I get angry. That I want to get rid of the divisiveness, and and I'm and I'm just kind of over it, you know. So and I know that kind of took us off subject a little bit, but yeah. it, it's I feel like that's what the the administration wants is the divisiveness, which that's where I'm like. I'm just not sure. I'm not sure that she needs this administration, though. I think that divisiveness is a tool that, like, for all, all politicians, everybody, and it's, and it's while they, but they do what they do behind closed doors while we're all like this. <laughs> well, and you had shared some good resources. Um, one of them, what's it called? Thirteen. Thir oh, thirteen. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. And as I'm watching it, I'm like, yeah, because to your point what Clinton put into administration in the early 90s, that then skyrocketed the population in the jails. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And now that I understand what jails are, I'm like, great, now how do we change it? Like, mm -hmm. where do I go? Because I'm a firm believer, this gets to change, and this may take a while. I get mm -hmm. that. I understand that. But I'm like, okay, but where can we go? At a local level, level there has to be somewhere I can go. Somebody I can talk to, something I can do to at least start that that um, chain of reaction, something. So, you know, I was listening to a podcast, and I, didn't, I don't remember the lady's name, but she's uh, from Africa, and she started a makeup line um, because the makeup lines that were in Africa did not represent the, t the true tone, tonality of black America. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that she was doing personally was, you know, because now there are corporations who are stating that black lives matter. But what she asked in her uh, makeup industry was, let me see the numbers of the people of color who you have in leadership positions. Because you say Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. But are you really doing something about it? Exactly, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that is another way for each and every person or industry to really um, show mm -hmm. that Black Lives do. Because it's easy to put out a statement. Mm -hmm. yes. But when you are hiring people mm -hmm. and promoting people, in your organization. Mm -hmm. Does everybody look like you? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I can tell you that um, my employer, which is a federal agency, I'm going to put it out there, De Defense Finance and Accounting Services, so I happen to be very proud of um, some of the initiatives that we're, we're doing because we have um, um, black female pipeline in that we've identified for whatever reason, black females in particular are not making to the senior leadership level. So we are um, doing research and trying to develop programs to make sure that that segment of our population is represented in our senior leadership. But it is not just our issue. You're right. It's, it's an issue with a lot of corporations. So as they, and I love what you just said, while they're talking about Black Lives Matter. Let's look underneath the hood. Absolutely. And let's see if you really mean that. Yes. Mm -hmm. What do you do? What's your what's your diversity diversity training? What about yes. bias training? Yes. Because yes. so much of that is so bedded into yes. hiring, promoting projects, yes. all of that. Yes. And so to try to the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know, I don't know what the answer is, but it starts with the heart. Yes. Right. First. Right. I and mean, you can train and train all day long, yes. but I'm not, and that's the problem is, you know, when you sit back and you think about it, you can train and teach people, you know, um, diversity and, and identifying bias in your decisions. I'm completely correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But there's this, some, some of this so embedded. It is. So, you know, even the place where I work mm. that I will not mention. Okay. I have been there 25 years, mm -hmm. and in 20, and they have, I think in the United States, maybe 8,000 employees. In 25 years, I've seen two black males in upper leadership positions. Two. In 25 years. I mean, it's, it's heartbreaking because that's not what America looks like. It right. isn't. And I noticed in some of the research I'm, I'm, I'm reading is large corporations, those that are very successful, realize that diversity is so key to profitability. Yes. Because when you bring a whole bunch of people like we are right now at the table to talk about different views, it actually does equate to a more profitable company because you're getting all these different point of views. Mm -hmm. Some companies, I think, are either starting to realize that and moving towards that direction. Some of them maybe are a little slow. I'm, I'm not certain, yeah. but I like the fact that my agency is definitely looking into trying to make change. Yes, right? and here's the thing. I'm a small business mm -hmm. in downtown Indianapolis. 
I have a black female. I have somebody who is disabled. I have somebody who's gay. I have a white male. The only person that I believe I'm missing <laughs> might be uh, somebody who's Hispanic and a black male. But me, being a small business owner, knows that it is important that my, in my small little number of six or seven employees looks a lot like what America looks like. Right. And so I'm not, I, you know, I believe that it's a lot easier than what people make it out to. Mm -hmm. They make it more difficult. Exactly. It's, it's not, you should not walk <laughs> into a place that you work and it, everybody looks like you. Period. <laughs> yeah, it's a really good point. I mean, even for me, because I'm a solopreneur, and you know, I really haven't thought about hiring anybody. I'm not there yet. And I, what I have thought about though, is the culture, which is what you're talking about, and you brought up, and even the bias training. I mean, there was something else you mentioned. Yeah. Diversity. I and think that is very important, and that's the culture has always kind of been in the back of my mind of what do I want the culture of Carbs Joy to truly be like. You know, and as you're sitting here talking, I don't know if you saw the light bulbs go off, but um, for Experience Your Awakening, when it's launched, you know, it gets to look a little different than what it initially was going to, to be. It just does. Mm -hmm. um, because of the conversations, it's more so the conversations <coughs> have changed mm -hmm. than, um, so that means the speakers get to change, yes. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, um, and again, that's because I'm shifting too. So thank you. You know, it's funny, I, um, my fiance is white, and a few years ago, we went to the Indiana Black Expo, no, white party, mm -hmm. and, you know, he, you know, he's no stranger to the black community, but I believe that that was the first time that he was at the Black Expo with that many black. He was the minority. He was yep. the and that's a whole different deal, <laughs> yes. isn't it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so while I certainly appreciated it, I was like, you good? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, about another hour, I'm like, you all right? <laughs> you know, just to, and I mean, we had a great conversation yeah. after that. And, and my, what my desire mm -hmm. is for every white person in America to be in that position. Yes. Because I believe that that is gonna help to give you em some empathy uh, because exactly. that's what mm -hmm. that's what this is about. Yes. For me, the mm -hmm. it's about the heart and yes. having empathy for people whose situation is different than yours. Mm -hmm. And so even, you know, there's sometimes that Dennis, he says things or he does and I'm like, you privileged <laughs> because I cannot say that or do that. You know what I'm saying? And it's and so we have these great conversations and you know, and even now he's like, I'm privileged, huh? It's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, you are. You know, because it's it's just it's a whole new and even there's some times where, you know, of course I'm in a lot of situations where I'm I'm the minority. That's how I grew up. That's you know what I'm saying? I'm in a lot of those situations. But there are times where that is exhausting mm -hmm. because I'm doing this dance of, you know, I can't really speak my mind or be angry because then everybody's. There's a black, mad black woman. woman. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's that. Yeah. It's, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, and I even told Carmen while we were waiting today, I was like, this is my last conversation. It's exhausting. It's. Mm -hmm. It is. It is so exhausting. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh. And when all of this started happening with George Floyd, and then there was another one, another one, mm -hmm. and then the riots, I mean, all that negativity, I was just like, I, 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 have, to, I have to just step away. Because we know this has been going on for years, right? This situation is really nothing new. It's the, only, not. the only thing that's changed <laughs> is people are videotaping. Yes, yeah. they have cameras. There's been many George Floyds before George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And I think there is a segment of our population that thinks, oh, he must have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. right. He's guilty. Because why would a police officer treat another person like that? They're a man or a person first before they put on that uniform. Mm -hmm. And whatever the heart that they have before they put that uniform yes. on remains the same. Yes. So I would appreciate certain people within this population to start recognizing. Yes. Not just say the blue lives matter. Yes. I agree. My husband is a 26-year-old veteran mm -hmm. from the police department. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, please just recognize that there's some bad cops Absolutely. that needs to be retrained yes. or needs to be fired. Just yes. that would mean everything to me. Yes. Just recognize that there are some bad people that are wearing uniforms. Yes. Mm -hmm. That are not treating people fairly. Absolutely. You know, it makes me me remember. I always go back to the guy who I think it was in the Carolinas where he went into the church and shot, I believe, nine individuals. Yes. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> he's still living. Right. I but think they went and got him some wings. They did. Burger they burger yes. they, yes. they, King. Put, they put a Kevlar vest on. Yes. The Burger King, he got something to eat, and he left. So... But then we see images of young black females in a car here recently with faces down on the ground with handcuffs mm -hmm. because they thought that they stole a car. And they were looking for a motorcycle. Is that the same one? Yes. But yeah. wait a minute. Not even the Why are people. these young women mm -hmm. on the ground mm -hmm. face down handcuffs. with handcuffs? Mm -hmm. I think what I want out of this conversation is just more, let's start recognizing there's bias and there's a difference. Mm -hmm. There's the black experience and there's the white experience. Mm -hmm. And there is such a thing called white privilege. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is a real thing. And yes. owning up to it. So yes. just acknowledging. I mean, I don't expect you to solve it. Yes. I don't, I, don't, I don't expect anyone to like necessarily solve it. Just recognition would be wonderful because well, that's the first step. Right? right. For me, it's the ownership, to take ownership of it. Because, um, and I've shared this with people before, you guys, I think I've heard this, is I didn't understand the Black Lives Matter when it started the movement. Mm -hmm. um, how many years? I did. I wasn't so in that space to understand it. I was one of those people. All lives matters. I didn't get it. And for me, it was because I had some personal shifts. Again, the heart, right? The that heart. I'm like, oh, got it now. You know. So as soon as everything happened, I reached out to you. Mm -hmm. You know, first to be like, because Damon is his folks. <laughs> what are you yeah. It's like Damon. Hey, Damon. What do you think? The same one. The fire and ballast one. So you yeah. like um, <laughs> well, it's a, what do I what do I say? And and before I felt so timid, kind of like you were saying, I was so timid to even say anything. And now I'm kind of like I'm not timid at all. Let's mm -hmm. it, let's run in and go fix and help and what do I need to do type of, like I feel totally differently now than I did back then and you and I have even had these conversations and I have been in the minority before you know with your family and mm -hmm. family outings I mean I feel like I am a part of your family you are. so um you know to your point about being in the minority I've been there done that mm -hmm. you know and so I still laugh about um just a comment that somebody She, she was like, oh my God, I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> you know? And I didn't, I didn't, I was like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know? Because I'm not in your shoes. Right. So I don't. Well, the difference though, you had the initiative to have something be different, whereas others are, my, my interpretation of some attitudes is, make this go away, I want this to Right. Stop. What can we do? What can we do not to really initiate change, but kind of like I don't want to talk about this. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. They don't, don't want to have the uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortable conversation. I don't want to do this. They this don't. Is, this hurts change. too much. I don't want to have this conversation. Yeah. Just, let's just change the subject, and that's fine. Well, that's how they deal with life: is they sweep it mm -hmm. under the rug instead of actually doing something mm -hmm. different about it. Well, and it doesn't impact some. It doesn't. It's not, there's not an impact to directly. Directly. Yet. You know, because I mean, I live in Fishers, Indiana. There's a lot. This doesn't impact them. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. So they can go on with their merry life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? The other thing that I find very interesting 
is that all of this is happening in the midst of COVID. And this whole issue of wearing masks. Because for me, it's asking that we have compassion and cover our mouth for the safety of somebody else. And we don't want to do that. No. Just like we don't want to have compassion no. for Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. To me, it's the same. I am, it's, okay, you're healthy, you're, okay, maybe you've already, okay, that's fine. But this is not about you. Can you appreciate the experience and the impact of somebody else? It's the lack of empathy. Right. Exactly. It's like, it is. why are we still arguing? Oh, <laughs> nobody wants to wear them. Mm -hmm. Can we just I say don't that? Wear them no, right. You can't breathe. It's claustrophobic. Okay, okay. Nobody likes to wear them. And, all the time. oh my gosh, <laughs> this is the first time I put on lipstick this week. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to wear masks. But this is not about me. Right. Exactly. It's about I can have I can have empathy for somebody else and I can be inconvenienced. Mm -hmm. So to me, I just found, you know, I have I have said 2020 is really gonna make history for so many reasons. And I think that up until August the 9th. We have shown that we, we don't have empathy for people. We think it's all about us mm -hmm. and our comfort and what we want to do and how things have always been. Mm -hmm. But like somebody said, this is not a pizza pizza. <laughs> like if you eat three pieces, it's not I'm not or if you give me one, like I'm not taking I'm not taking this is not a piece of pizza. This is about us having empathy and compassion for other people. And it's, and it's like every time I see people who are arguing and, and really livid mm -hmm. about wearing a mask, it's like, that is so, it's an eye, for me, it's an eye opener about your thought process. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. Right. And I am more important than, I than the whole. Yeah. Right, yeah. absolutely. Me and my creature come more important mm -hmm. than people who are not like me. Very good point. Then I never thought about it that way. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't see how people can just be okay with a whole segment of, of their of the population, their neighbors, going through an experience that is negative and hurtful and then not have that empathy. Right? Yeah. I, I just, I don't, I don't get it. Because I mean, I have empathy for for all Americans who are going through all kinds of stuff. I mean, stuff is mm -hmm. going on at the border. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. like, there's just things going on in our society, in our world. Chinese Americans are getting battered mm -hmm. right now yeah. because our president chooses to use certain terminology yep. that is derogatory to them, yep. and they're being targeted. Mm -hmm. That hurts me. Mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. Mm -hmm. That's called empathy. I'm not Asian American, but I can empathize yes. and say that that's wrong. Yes. Why isn't the rest? Why is that okay for other people? I, I just I think we've been desensitized. I think there's been a lot of desensitivity over the years from um, media, from movies, from things of that nature. I'm not excusing it. I'm just from some of the research I've been doing recently. A lot of it is just people are desensitized. So they, the lack, there's a, to me, that's why there's a huge lack of empathy. And I feel like it's very, very easy to sit behind a keyboard yeah. and say whatever you want to say because you're truly hiding behind a keyboard sure. and you're hiding, be, I mean, a phone, even a phone, you're hiding behind a phone, sure. you know, on social media. And like you've got your podcast out now and it's in different countries. And so, you know, it'll be interesting to see just the feedback you get. And a lot of people read the comments. Yeah, I've heard that, right? <laughs> I'm reading. <laughs> I'm reading. <laughs> um, and that's why. It's to me, and for my experience, sure. you know, when I did the flash mob for Love and Equality, do you think we did not get blasted? Mm -hmm. 
And the people who were involved in that were so angry. And I said, just leave it be. Because there are people out there who are trolls. That's like all they do, mm-hmm. if they're real, mm-hmm. you know, if they're real and not computers. And just what we did was fun. You know, y'all had fun doing it. And and you got the message across. There was a message in there of love and equality. And so just enjoy that piece of it. So for me, that's where the lack of empathy has has come into play. And these are the problems. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And these are and we all have our own families and problems that we're already dealing with. And then there's all these society problems too. So to take those in as well, I mean I think I think that's probably probably part of it too. Feeling hopeless and not being able to make a difference for some people. It's not so much maybe not so much empathy, but what can I do? I I don't you know. Right. So I think that that's that could be some of it too. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's a good reminder for us and for anybody watching this video of to show up kind with love. Yes. With empathy. You know, and even if we do have bad days. You know, it, it can be a bad five minutes. It doesn't have to be a whole bad 24 hours. Mm-hmm. You get to choose what that, look, and I'm just talking about for anybody, including myself. You know, my morning this morning did not go how it, I planned it. <laughs> and I'm going to have a bad day because of it. So, anything else on your hearts that you would like to share with those who may be I think uh, for me, it's just the message of um, be, be kind, have some empathy, be open-minded, um, and just kind of just maybe learn a little bit more of the other experience. That experience may not be the same as yours. I think that that's where I love for people to realize. Do our research, do our homework. A little bit. I mean, just care. change but you can maybe make the change in your heart mm-hmm. that may impact your family I mean that's where you start there mm-hmm. I mean you may not be able to change everything but you can start with yourself and then those people around you that love you I guess I would speak to the people who are fighting the good fight just be encouraged I, I, for all the negativity surrounding things I think that this is perfect timing it is divine timing like this is the there's no going back from where we are. Like this is not this is not going to be a Rodney King situation where it was it was hot and heavy for a few years and then it went away. I mean, because I, I think that whether it was COVID or whatever, <clears throat> there was a forced pause and we kind of were all stuck at home and people who had no idea saw the George Floyd incident mm-hmm. and it was like you just couldn't you couldn't say you didn't know. Like you may not have known before today, but now you know. Mm-hmm. And so there's no going back. Um, you can't unsee it. You can't unsee, you can't unsee it. it. <laughs> and I, I would say for people who are, um, I, like I said, fighting the good fight, uh, there's no need to apologize or defend or explain. There are certain things that aren't negotiable. And you meet people where they are and you bring those on board who are in alignment and you let the others fall by the wayside. I, I, what, 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 I, what bothers me, what, worry, what I get worried about or anxious about is that <clears throat> the frustration turns to isolation and there's momentum is lost and we just eventually get back in our silos of our own individual lives and nothing, no change is affected. It's just another flip it over history and we'll have to have enough, this will just be a continuing cycle every few years. I don't think it, I think. I, 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 I think this, this so. is the beginning mm-hmm. of the shift, and, and I say that based on the knowledge, and you and I have talked about this, mm-hmm. the knowledge I have of what's happening in what I call the others, and with the astrology piece, mm-hmm. and I believe God's done it that by design. And when you look back in past history, some of the planets that were in retrograde brought about similar changes for good. And so that's just, that's how I believe, I've mm-hmm. seen it, and so... I, and again, the lesson got bigger and bigger enough, in my opinion, that it's, it's we're done. Like, it's, it, I'm done with it.
with it anyway. So it, get, it gets to be different. Something gets to be different. So for me, this is just the beginning of this new 10-year cycle, if not longer, um, that, that we're going to see change. And on the flip side, I can't 100% say we're going to see some sort of change um, by the end of the year. Yeah. Um, right. Let me say that. I look to kids. I look to like yes, people, my right. kids, my kids, mm -hmm. I was just 21. Yes. And they're just, they're not, they're not foolishly fearless, but there's a, there's a healthy disconnect. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, this is kind of off topic, but I, a lot of, I grew up, you know, you listen to gangster rap, N.W.A. Ice-T, mm -hmm. <laughs> And, you know, they were such rebels and, and, and folk rockers and, yeah. oh, my gosh. And, you know, and they, I've heard them talk about, you know, their kids are the most wallflower, mm -hmm. insulated, spoiled mm -hmm. kids. Because, you know, every parent wants their kids to have it better than they had it. Eat a little easier to walk, a little easier to breathe. To breathe. And I, I don't think that, I know my kids are spoiled and they're weird and they're different. But there's a healthy disconnect in that they just... Like, where certain people don't understand the black experience or what it's like to be a minority in America, my kids don't get, like, racism is just stupid. It's just, like, I might as well drink a bottle of Clorox. Like, that's just dumb. Yeah. And, so, and so I think that, to, to your point, there's going to be, I think through our kids, mm -hmm. there's going to be this cord cutting of, mm -hmm. no, we're not doing this. Is, and as people age out who are problematic, Maybe, maybe we elect younger officials. Yep. Maybe we get, you get younger yep. in our, in our, um, all in our uh, all, you know, elected offices. So. Well, and I had a conversation with somebody a few weeks ago about that and said, how, how can I change this? Mm -hmm. And they said, local government. Yeah. That's the first thing that he said to me. And when I said earlier that there's going to be a shift at this next how many months left that we got in 2020, it's not necessarily going to be a shift with the um, racial injustices. It's going to lead to that, though. Mm -hmm. it, it, it is. I know I sound crazy right now, and and I, it is. It is going to. I would like to think that this generation is better than, say, my generation as far as racism, but hate is taught. It is. And That's even true. at, um, you know, my son's high school, he's hearing racial, racial slurs. Mm -hmm. Where's that coming from? Home. Home. Exactly. So I would love to think that we're eventually going to put this in our past, but it's just going to more every single generation, if there's hate being taught, hate will continue. Mm -hmm. Right? Ugh. So that's, that's disheartening. It is. Because we can be so much better than that. And I'm on a mission to change that. So. <laughs> to you talking to about that mm -hmm. is your response to that hurt okay no what about dogs or the robin i mean like you know is that do you have the same response right it's a good point as black lives matter mm -hmm. and if you find that you don't mm -hmm. Maybe that is um, a place.
place where you might be in resistance that you might need to look at. Mm -hmm. Because for me, when I give to the Cancer Foundation or the Red Door or whatever the case is, that is who is on my heart to give to. Right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that other things are not equally as important. Mm -hmm. But for right now, I'm going to talk to the red door. Right. And so I think that, um, you know, I think that that needs to look, it needs to be looked at if this is the only way that you are responding <coughs> like that is as it relates to Black Lives Matter. Right. Supporting Susan G. Coleman doesn't do this service to leukemia in society. Absolutely. Like nobody is like, well, right. what about Alzheimer's? Right. Like, right. We're not talking about that right now. Right. <laughs> And so if, if, you know, I, I read a comment from somebody who I was, we were following each other and she was like, who's willing to give up their rights so that other people can have rights or something? I was like, what? Like, how did you get to, you're giving up your rights so that other people can have the same rights that you already have. Yeah, that makes sense. So, you know, it's one of those people I was like, <sighs> to friend or unfriend? <laughs> Which one should I do? Because it's like, it's not, like if that is your <clears throat> reaction to people being hurt, abused, and killed, like maybe that's what you, maybe give some attention to mm -hmm. if that is your response mm -hmm. um, and the other thing that I would say is just be kind just treat people the way you would want to be treated and if you see something you know it's funny I was in McDonald's a couple days ago and this lady, two cars before me, paid for my meal. I was like, what? Mm -hmm. I'm here for the guys behind my yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so if that, if something that's small can be good, mm -hmm. what if we just did more of that? Mm -hmm. Instead of yeah. all that other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Because the good is also very contagious Absolutely. if you focus on that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like you know we we got to get back to just being human and treating other human beings like they're human because I have seen that people are more opinionated and in action on animals that are mistreated mm -hmm. than human beings. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that I am for animals getting mistreated? No. No, it does not. Right. But I also believe that humans should not be mistreated. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's really all it is. And so I, I think that if we could just just be nice. <laughs> well, and as you're sharing this, I I feel like it's the ego. It's the that their ego is coming into play, like well, kind of like the the animal example. But all animals, you know, matter. The so I feel like that's the ego that's just really getting in the way of a lot of the people instead of going back to the heart. Well, I really appreciate you all for showing up today, for taking time to share, because once again, y'all gave me more things to think about. <laughs> I know y'all are sick of talking about this, so, and, and I just, I really appreciate each and every one of you for showing up. Thank you so much for allowing us to be in your beautiful space, downtown, Mass Ave. So, um, yeah, thank you guys so much. So, thank you all for joining us, and um, until the next time, sending
when you match love, take care.